uh, cross over and we will see that is the dangerous age. Now what we have in this slide is the, uh, on the left, that's the uh, DNA profile of a healthy 20-year-old female. And we see that uh, if we looked at the uh, estradiol that affects the DNA, whereas the soy compounds uh, on the right when added to it brings it back to the uh, healthy 20-year-old profile. That's where all women would like to be. So the uh, soy phytochemicals, anti-allergy, anti-viral, anti-inflammatory, vasodilator, anti-cancer, quite good, quite a good mix. Now, there's soy controversy out there because all soy products are not equal. And many of the studies are unable to make a general classification because what is a soy study? Uh, fermented or unfermented, there are uh, compounds that are taken out of the soy. Uh, the NCI published their results in 1991, April 17th, in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute. Since then, there are over 9,000 studies on soy. Some are with genistein, some are with diazine, some are with both, some are with the whole soy, some are uh, uh, combinations of those. There's over 10,000 varieties of soybeans. The phytochemical content varies 50% depending on the mineral in the soil where they're grown, varies an additional 50% depending on the age of the beans when they pick for processing, and then the processing varies it greatly. And so we see that uh, there are studies out there which make it difficult to compare results. And so most of the research we have done is, has been with fermented soy beverages because we can, we can get a uniform mixture of that compound and it includes the best of those because we've eliminated the uh, uh, unfermented products which have difficulty. The fermented soy beverage, when you drink it, uh, it produces blood protein levels in the area 8.5%. IV feeding in the hospital runs 8.5 to 11% at a cost of $1,000 a day in the United States. So it's a very good nutritional product and it was developed as hospital nutrition. But if we look at some of the controversy on that, there, there's a question of estrogen uh, receptor positive breast cancer. And of course, the pharmaceutical companies say women who take tamoxifen should not take soy products because theoretically the soy phytoestrogens occupy the same receptor site as the tamoxifen and reduce the effectiveness of the treatment. Also, uh, they say uh, women should not take the soy products because it raises the estrogenic index in the blood. Not true. Uh, first, let's take the uh, soy controversy. Tamoxifen in occupying the receptor site is 26% effective. Soy protein isolate by itself in studies is 36% effective. The two together are 62% effective. Now, why would the two be better than either one individually? That's because 1995 Nobel Prize winner learns and tells us there are two receptor sites on breast tissue, not one like the pharmaceutical company says. This, the tamoxifen has a strong affinity for the alpha receptor site, weaker for beta, but the soy is strong for beta, weaker for alpha, but it reduces the number of alpha receptor sites. We see in some uh, cases the number of beta receptor sites, 25 to 30% in greater number than the alpha receptor site. So between the two, the soy is far superior to the tamoxifen. Now, uh, the question as to whether it raises the estrogenic index. There's a study by Dr. Jane Lewis at the University of Texas Medical School showed that healthy women who take the whole soy product, not isolates like genistein or diazinine, at lowest total circulating levels of estrogen, 30 to 40 percent lower than those who don't. Uh, if we look at studies in Japan, Nagata in that group, uh, shows that the whole soy lowest total circulating levels of estrogen in Japanese women, 25 percent lower than those who don't. So it does not raise the estrogenic index and, and increase the risk of cancer or promote if a person has it. Now, other mechanisms of action. First, uh, we would take tamoxifen. It works by blocking the receptor site. If we looked at the soy phytoestrogens, first, it, it lowers total circulating levels of estrogen, 30 to 40 percent. It improves the ratio between the 2-hydroxy estrogens and 16-hydroxy estrogens. Uh, three things in science do that, and we know that women to have, to have a low risk of breast cancer and not promoted if you have it, should have a ratio of 2 to 1 between the 2-hydroxy estrogens and the 16-hydroxy estrogens. The 2-hydroxy estrogens are good ones. They don't damage DNA, do not cause cancer, and do not speed it up. Pregnant women have high levels of the 2s. Uh, 4 and 16-hydroxy estrogens damage DNA. DNA cause cancer and speed it up. So we want to reduce those. In science, there are three things that improve that ratio. Indole-3-carbonyl, DIM, and soy. 
And so we have seen ratios as high as four and five to one with the with the fermented soy beverage. In addition to that, uh, uh, we see that that the soy shuts off the blood supply that feeds the tumor, reverses the DNA damage, and. 30 to 50 percent of the women who consume the, the soy product will produce a phytoestrogen named Equal. Equal is a fermentation metabolite of diazine and diazine in the intestines that becomes fermented and is a very potent anti cancer compound. Now, about uh, two years ago, the U.S. government put out a report stating that users of antibiotics are at high risk for cancer, but they didn't say why. The reason why is it there are over 4,400 isoflavors in the plant kingdom. The most bioactive for cancer is in, is in the soybeans. And that uh, winds up killing off microflora when you take antibiotics, which means those isoflavin compounds that you eat in the plant kingdom become killed off. Now, the Chinese have used ginseng for over a thousand years to treat cancer, but the Japanese were smart enough to learn when you eat the ginseng, it becomes fermented in the intestines, it produces anti-cancer metabolites that winds up being very effective in the uh, uh, treatment because in research if you take ginseng and cancer cells together you don't get much so the fermentation of the microflora in the gut produce anti-cancer metabolites from all of the uh, plants and vegetables we eat now we found a uh, uh, branch fatty acid in, in the fermented soy uh, MTD uh, 13 referred to that one compound we isolated it got 88 percent tumor shrinkage by waiting 40 days in human prostate cancer 66 percent shrinkage by waiting 40 days in human liver cancer inducing apoptosis in two hours uh, and that is by reversing the DNA damage now I was surprised to find eight studies in Japan showed you could reverse over 50 percent of leukemia cells to normal in less than 24 hours uh, if you could get these soy isoflavins in the bloodstream up between 22 and 40 for micrograms per liter of blood. Well, that's very high because in, in commercial unfermented products, those compounds run 500 to 3,000 Daltons. You can't get them in the blood supply, but the fermented, you, you have a chance to do that. Now, in a report from Comonas Cancer Center, Wayne State University says that all cancer cells try to mutate within two hours of being hit with chemotherapy. That mutation pathway is nuclear factor kappa beta, and the soy compound shut off that mutation capability 100%, and you get minimum eight to 10 times greater cancer cells kill and chemotherapy does by itself. Uh, now, we did a study with breast cancer. Uh, chemotherapy by itself, as you increase the chemotherapy, you generally got greater cancer cell kill until you got some mutated cells. At a half percent chemotherapy, 82 percent of cancer cells survived. At uh, five times stronger, two and a half percent by volume chemotherapy, there were 14 percent of cancer cells surviving. At five percent chemotherapy, there were 4.6 cancer cells surviving. With the fermented soy beverage, at three percent, it was 4.8 cancer cells surviving. So we see that very uh, interesting. Now, when we looked at the uh, uh, genes involved in the pro-apoptosis gene, we see that uh, uh, chemotherapy goes the wrong way. It reduced the gene expression, whereas you want to increase the gene expression. The chemotherapy treatment started at a half percent at 1.1 and reduced down to 0.71, whereas the fermented soy beverage went up to 3.84. So you have over 500 percent increase in the pro apoptosis gene expression, uh, and which is named BACS. Now, when we looked at the anti-apoptosis gene expression, the chemotherapy uh, did reduce the gene expression there, but the fermented soy was twice as good. So in that area, we see that uh, when we took a half a percent chemotherapy and added the soy, we got the same cancer cell kill as five times stronger chemotherapy without the mutated cells and without the multidrug resistance. Now, on the mutated cancer cells, let me mention this. At 5%, I said there were 4.6 cancer cells surviving with the chemotherapy. At 3.75, you kill twice as many cancer cells. So what happened was when you hit the 5% level, when we looked at the multidrug resistance, um, it was to a level reading 17, which meant that uh, now the MDR1 gene is the multidrug resistance gene. That is a chemical pump in the cell that pumps toxins and poisons out of the cell to keep it alive. So at 17, that chemotherapy is pumping out of the cell and it's not staying in so it's not killing the cell. Now the multidrug resistance on the fermented soy beverage was in area four. So it's one-fourth of the number 
Uh, we have completed a best case series with the National Cancer Institute, won awards uh, for breast cancer, liver cancer, and others, and for life expectancy. Uh, this is uh, an abstract published by seven OBGYN oncologists at Harvard recommending the fermented soy beverage for platinum chemotherapy resistant ovarian cancer. Uh, that is the chemotherapy used for ovarian cancer. If the tumor grows in six months, generally they are terminal. This involves a case long term stabilization of the chemotherapy resistant ovarian cancer. And so uh, there was an article published on terminal cancer patients who survived terminal cancers published in the Thompson Letter uh, November 2004. And so we have many mechanisms of action that can help the physician manage the disease while he tries to treat it. Thank you for uh, uh, the time. We're out.